Minecraft YouTuber Dream has had a very controversial career despite being known for playing a simple little video game, so I decided to go through his controversies on the internet and get things down starting from the very beginning. Shout out to the channel members like always, and if you'd like to support yourself, you can check out my Patreon in the corner or YouTube memberships by clicking the join button. With that being said, let's not waste any more time here and jump right into things where they started to get a bit strange on the man. The first controversy Dream would find himself in would be during Minecon Live 2020, in which the viewers are given three mobs to choose from to add to the game. The Moobloom, the Isolager, and the Glow Squid. YouTubers like Captain Sparkles would share their opinion on who they want to win in a low-key sort of way as to not outright affect the vote with their influence, whereas Dream would go full throttle, telling people to vote for the Glow Squid as he wanted it to win, even going onto his alt account saying that he would follow anyone who proved they voted for the mob. He'd start to positively interact with those that proved their vote on his main Twitter, influencing even more people to go and vote for his mob of choice. Captain Sparkles would continue to be a bit more low-key with his influence, whereas Dream was still pushing full force trying to get the squid to win, even getting Mr. Beast onto the train at one point in time. Eventually, the glow squid would be the winner of the mob vote, Captain Sparkles would show his disdain with the decision that was made, and Dream would celebrate his victory while people went their separate ways. However, people start accusing him of rigging the vote by using his massive influence to skew it in his favor. And while he was at first cracking jokes about these claims, he would start to get a bit more serious as people kept pushing this narrative against him. Jim would eventually say this was because he was going along with how people made YouTube videos doing the same exact thing and he just did so on Twitter. Saying that even if he influenced them, they probably would have voted the Glow Squid anyway. And ends things off saying that he didn't really care that much and he was just having fun on Twitter. He would say he didn't mean to ruin any sort of community vote at all, clarify Mr. Beast was having his own fun on his own accord, and apologize saying that he was sorry for upsetting people by influencing the vote as the post wanes off. This controversy wasn't the most insane, it was mostly an insight on the influence people can have and how powerful it can be. What's notable though is not whether Dream rigged the vote or not, but rather how he dismisses his influence saying that people would have voted for the glow squid anyway, or how he quoted him influencing the mob vote as a way to downplay it. It's very obvious he did have influence on the vote whether it was strong or weak, and seeing him try to downplay it was a sign that he wasn't grasping at just how much power he has, and telling his fans that he loves them at the end of the message was him feeding into a parasocial relationship that I don't need to go into much detail about as you already have an idea on how crazy dream stands are. In fact, during the peak of this parasocial relationship soon after the mob vote mess, he would make a now infamous tweet that I'm sure he very much regrets in hindsight. Dream would soon find himself in another controversy, and this would have to do with his hobby of being a Minecraft speedrunner, as the head of Minecraft speedrunning Geosquare would make a YouTube video discussing whether Dream cheated in his speedruns or not. To make a long story short, things came down to his Ender Pearl trades and Blaze Rod drops, and after doing all the math, the probability for him to get them the way they worked in his run would be 1 in 7.5 trillion, making it virtually impossible and therefore his game was considered modified and the run was rejected by the mods. Dream wouldn't take kindly to this news, as he'd make a post saying that Geosquare was using his name for clout and easy views, then going on to say that multiple mods are messaging him that it was his bias to try and skew the public opinion in his favor. He would go on to link the run in order to be transparent with the people keeping up with the situation as it started to make its way around the internet. On December 23rd, he would upload a now deleted video to his second channel going over the situation, saying that he hired a statistical expert with a PhD to go over the situation and proven to be correct alongside a 19 page report written by the person in question. I'd normally go over all the information, but a reddit post would come out talking about the situation and sums it up as a person who did the math was either ignorant or malicious, before going into the nitty gritty on what and how they got the stuff wrong that made Dream look good. Alongside that, YouTubers Carl Jobs and Ant Venom would do their own investigation into the situation, and both would come to the conclusion that something was definitely afoot here despite Dream's claims of innocence. Dream would delete the video on February 16th, 2021, stating that he didn't want his viewers to see content that isn't typical on his channel, but then just three months later he would admit to accidentally having client mods on that affected the Ender Pearl and Blaze Rod drops in a now deleted pastebin message on May 30th. He goes into detail on his mindset leading up to the GeoSquare video, and explains that his drop rates are normally higher on the server side whenever he's trying to make a YouTube video to make things easier, and he just assumed this wouldn't affect his client itself, but that actually did and he didn't know. The rest isn't of importance, but here we got Dream admitting that he did indeed cheat in his speedrun, albeit trying to feign ignorance and saying that he had no idea he did it as he didn't know the cheats were on. Whether you want to believe him or not is your choice entirely, but given his aggressive attitude towards Geosquare even though he was right the entire time and never disclosing the identity of this so-called stat expert he hired, things are leaning in the direction that he knew he cheated and was just trying to ease the incoming hate train he was about to receive. Now before Dream admitted to cheating, Geosquare would actually make an alt account in March and start to accuse him of saying the n-word alongside two video clips of that happening, causing people to look into the situation. 
Turns out this is the person who owned the dream name before Dream bought it. As YouTuber Delta Ninja had made a video talking about it before the controversy even started, and we're going to make an update video saying that the old dream was the one who would say stuff like that. Explain the video, I knew the old dream. Um, he liked to throw around racial slurs, he liked to throw around uh, homophobic slurs, he was he was what you would call an asshole pretty much. Geoscar would then delete the alt account, apologize for his poor investigation into the n-word stuff. Which is very ironic given he's correct with the much more complex Minecraft cheating situation, but I digress. As Dream started to become more controversial, people dig into his past more, such as finding out he was an avid supporter of former United States President Donald Trump during his time in office on an alt reddit account of his. Given how volatile politics can be, a lot of people started to dislike Dream more because of this affiliation. So he'd make a pastebin message that sums up as him and a friend running a joint reddit account together and that his friend was the one who supported him. Given how outlandish this claim was, a lot of people didn't buy it, and so they would keep digging. Such as finding a video of him making jokes of the black Minecraft character skin named Tyrone, and a meme edit including the famous American wearers of the Catholic Caparote outfit popular in Spanish countries. We have Steve, for guys, and we have Alex, for girls. But, they just recently added Tyrone. So basically you're gonna let your chicken cook until it is basically white. What's interesting to note is that he doesn't outright mention the pointy white hat people edit when people found the video but says it was just an MLG video that people are maliciously editing, which as we can see, is him outright lying to his audience with no defense whatsoever. While it's very easy to explain those videos as simply edgy jokes, a lot of Twitter didn't like seeing this kind of stuff from Dream, and so a good portion of his audience would start to turn on him. During this time, a lot of old tweets would be seen under much more scrutiny. Such as one where he recognizes the fact that his fanbase would harass accounts he replies to and takes solace in the weaponization of them, showing he's very well aware of his influence online. People would also find he's associated with known doxers on the internet as someone mentioned they kept taking his stuff down on the doxbin site, and he would say he was respected by some members of that community alongside another convo saying how easy it is to find someone once you get their name. One of those members included the former owner of doxbin itself, as they bragged that Dream used to edit videos for them at one point in time, and during a leak, someone would find evidence of them mass blocking a bunch of doxes related to Dream, in which rumors at the time said it was Dream himself using their account to do so. Whether that last part is true or not, the fact Dream has admitted to having ties to doxers and coincidentally seemed to always have his docs taken off the most popular doxing site on the internet did raise a lot of suspicion. With that being said, most of these controversies are rather tame in nature or flew under the radar, but people are starting to turn on a man because when having such a broad audience, there's bound to be a couple of sensitive or crazy fans who would do anything they could to take him down. Nonetheless, he would go on to face every on October 2nd, 2022, showing everyone what he looks like after years of hype. Things were slowing down in his career by this point, but for all intents and purposes, it was still going pretty okay. However, some big news would come out just after this face reveal, and news that would put his career in some serious jeopardy. On October 3rd, Twitter user OxyClean would make a thread about her personal experience with Dream after he face revealed the previous day. The thread wouldn't gain any traction until 10 days later on the 13th and goes into detail on what they've done and talked about together. She would first say that he already showed his face to her two years prior when flirting with her when she was a minor. She would contemplate hashtagging it before going through with it, alludes to some random thing about talking to younger people, and shows that they have been friends on Snapchat since March 19, 2020, along with sending Dream's reaction when he saw her screenshot their friendship date. She would go on to post an image showing her telling him she's under 18 in DMs, along with a video showing these DMs are from his main account and not some fake stuff going on at all. She would post another video again showing that they DM'd each other on Twitter and whatnot, and then post some text messages between the two of them, which are basically just normal cringy flirty text messages between two people. She would go on to talk about him talking to her when she was 17 was really bad stuff and ramble on a bit about that, and then post proof of having his number by showing her TikTok saying that dream was from her contacts. Some people thought this could be fake, so someone else would show a post back in October 2020 of her referencing how he talked to her when she was 17, and then some leaked DMs would even have her referencing it as well with a friend of hers. During this time they are messaging each other, Dream was 20 given his birthday is August 12th 1999, and she said she was 17. Now I'm gonna keep it real with y'all, a 3 year age gap ain't exactly nothing too crazy if you ask me. I've defended it before and I'll defend it again, because the messages show two people talking back and forth with nobody showing any discomfort at all. It's flirty and it's cringe, but it isn't nothing to hold against either person as something with malicious intent, and implying other things like the 13 or 15 year old doesn't make your claim look any good without any hard proof. 
It really muddies the waters and makes it look out to be somebody who had malicious intent when revealing all this information. With all that being said, Dream was reckless here for talking to this girl because she did say she wasn't 18 and he kept talking to her. And given how the internet reacts to this kind of stuff, it was a stupid move through and through. Nothing cancel worthy, but certainly stupid, risky, and reckless. After seeing all this, putting it together and making my mind up, I headed to sleep seeing it as another wannabe cancellation thread. But when I woke up the next day, some more stuff dropped, and this time it was much more than just a small three-year age gap. In a thread that was made trying to gather up every little thing that can be used to cancel Dream on Twitter, a user named Amanda would drop a bomb and say that when she was 17, Dream sent nude pictures to her, including an especially graphic one on Snapchat, and included two videos as well, one of their messages between each other on Instagram dating back to January this year, and another of their Snapchat messages between each other, showing that they have a history together. Suddenly, things were ramping up once more, and she would post a couple of videos to TikTok before getting deleted off the site for some reason. The bottom two are just more confirmation the messages are real, but the top two are the important ones here, as she goes into more detail on their interactions between each other. She would first message Dream on September 23rd, 2020, basically just saying how much of a fan she is of him and whatnot, and he would reply back and they would chat a bit like any people would. She would skip ahead to January 17th of this year and say that once she added him on Snapchat, that's when things took off between the two of them, as well as giving people her reason for such a large gap in their text because she said she had a boyfriend to stop speaking to Dream during that time. He ha that's his private. And if you're questioning the gap between 2020 and 2021, like the end of 2021 into 2022, it's because I had a boyfriend, so I stopped messaging him. So from the 17th to maybe February 10th is the time frame where we were Thing. I was either going to have him come to my the resort I was at or he was going to pick me up and bring him to his house. And to top it all off, he blocked me after seeing my tweet. You want evidence for that? Here it is. He blocked me. Now when this tweet started going around, some people were a bit skeptical with what was going on. She said she was 17 when everything went down between the two of them, but didn't have any proof of age, and everything she said that happened had no evidence as well. However, it's very clear that she was in contact with him, and he did send flirty messages to her as well, but her age and everything that happened between them was nothing more than hearsay at the most. Dream himself would catch wind of one of the TikTok videos that Amanda posted, and so fans were wondering when he would make a proper response to what the hell was going on. He already made reference to the previous situation the day before in his private Twitter account, but this new situation was a much bigger deal, and so he would drop a twit longer going over everything for people to see. It would open up with him apologizing for taking so long to reply properly because he was busy and all that, and then he starts to go right into everything. Dream talks about the first thread from OxyClean, stating that there were no inappropriate comments between the two of them whatsoever, that she said she was 18 years old in her bio, thus giving him the impression that she was 18, and that it's impossible for those text messages to be from him because he uses a Google Voice number on his TikTok account, and it has no ability to iMessage from that. He ends that part off saying that she was 18 years old and it said she was 18 in her Twitter bio. What's interesting about this part is he says he asked for her age which is true and she replied she was under 18, but Dream doesn't mention this message at all in the entire twit longer and instead just says oh she said she was 18 and her Twitter bio says she was 18. It's strange that he wouldn't admit he kept talking to her after figuring out she was under 18 despite clear evidence of that being out there but whatever. Dream then talks about Amanda next and says she was 18 when they chatted together. Before going on a tangent about parasocial relationships and whatnot, something that's not really important to the overall claims in general. All that part does is serve as a distraction from the main purpose, which is to refute any claims made against him. He would then say he tries to keep people as comfortable as he can when he talks to him, and that he believes people are going after him now because he made the decision to stop using that Snapchat account and make a new one for only real friends and basically start over on that front. He goes on about how his team has access to all his social media accounts and that things are getting extremely serious to the point he's pursuing legal action against anyone who uses his name to spread disinformation about him because of this situation. He ends things off saying he feels sorry for real victims and that hopefully this puts some of the stuff to rest as he enjoys the rest of his vacation in LA. What's important to note from this twit longer is that Dream claims Amanda was 18 when everything went down, but Amanda claims she was 17. However, they met on September 23rd, 2020, and using a post of hers when she said it was her birthday, it was easy to put two and two together and figure out that Dream was 21 and Amanda was 16 when they first met. That means this whole time they were speaking to each other, there was a four and a half year age gap give or take a couple of days. 
Amanda would make a post telling Dream to own up to what he did or she would get the police involved, and then would prove her birthday by using her permit, showing that she was indeed underage when they were messaging on Snapchat together. People started to absolutely hound Amanda, telling her to get her Snapchat history and leak whatever was said between January 10th to February 18th, but she would instead head to the police wanting to do this the proper way and not dirty the evidence by letting the public get a hold of it. Also something to note, during this time a Twitter user named Avril would make a bunch of cryptic posts about the situation, alluding to the notion that she knows who Amanda is, would post saying that they used to know each other and that Amanda is stealing her experience with another content creator to use against Dream for Clout, as well as saying the Snapchats are fake, and make a weird series of tweets basically saying the same thing, but that she's looking for proof and that she's scared of Amanda for some reason. She would then imply she's taking things to court as well, leak a message apparently alluding that Dream's ex-girlfriend Sam is is in this somehow, and then reiterate that she's working with her legal team and doesn't know why Sam's name is being brought up. Now that's where things would end off, and after going through it all, it was worth pointing out that in the Anastasia case he did ask her age and then say never mind 18, which implies that Dream read her Twitter bio and it said 18 like his defense says. I already said the 3 year age gap isn't concerning to me, and from what it looks like the dynamic didn't seem to have any manipulation going on. It's still very reckless however, and this type of reckless behavior would start to become a common theme for Dream down the line. Now when I picked up the Avril case again, it didn't really add up to anything. It's nothing but a bunch of illusions at most, and how exactly did Amanda steal your experience with another content creator? I don't understand this logic at all, it sounds like she's implying Amanda is using her evidence to frame Dream, but how's that even possible? Those ain't Avril's fingers in the TikTok videos, those are clearly Amanda's. And the one showing Dream blocking Amanda is recent as hell, so there's no way it's an old video Avril sent to Amanda when they were apparently friends. And I say apparently because Avril has shown no evidence showing that they were friends that were talking at one point. Also something to note, Avril sent a bunch of messages about how the Dream Discord is on lockdown and how others are being dragged into it, but it begs the question. If Amanda apparently stole the story and Avril obviously knows this given she says it was hers, why make these tweets implying she's worried about what would happen when she shouldn't as she already apparently knows this all to be fake? None of this makes any sense to me, and frankly this lead comes off as nothing more but a bid for attention on Twitter. That would be proven to be true as there's a thread talking about her that can basically be summed up as a mentally deranged chick lying and saying whatever she can to get attention. So with that case out of the way, we only had Amanda remaining, and she was the one that had some really interesting stuff going on here. Dream was born August 12th, 1999, and Amanda was born February 17th, 2004. That means between January 17th to February 10th, 2022, Dream was 22 and Amanda was 17 when they were speaking with each other, and if what Amanda said was true about him sending images to her, that's some pretty messed up stuff. However, that was just all allegations and nothing more as there was no evidence, and as a matter of fact there's no evidence from either person on whether she told her age to him or not. For all we know she could have lied about her age to him, but it's worth pointing out that despite Dream saying she said she was 18, he provides no proof of that on his end. No one really knows what the truth is in this situation and things are heading to the police by this point so it was in the law's hands now. But Amanda's allegations would severely damage his reputation as it wasn't just some random person lying, but someone who Dream definitely spoke with before, who just have no idea who's lying and who's telling the truth about the situation. Dream wouldn't help his diminishing reputation as on April 27th, 2023, he would write a book about how YouTuber and friend Quackity was ignoring him about the topic of their separate SMP servers as they were getting ready. Dream tries to say he was just a caring friend talking about the situation, but given he brought up an extremely personal calm with a friend of his to the public, it's pretty obvious he was just trying to use the public to pressure Quackity into speaking with him again, and people saw right through this and rightfully criticized him for it. It's super boring and petty, but it was still interesting to see him try to leverage the public in his favor when the majority of the internet by this point was well aware of this sneaky nature of his. On June 9th, Dream would release a video by from Dream, in which he announced he would be deleting his face reveal and any pictures of him off the internet because of the attention and hate he got. The description points this out as well and he calls himself ugly, but it reads in such a strange and rather cringe way even for his standards that I felt something was up. Nonetheless, he would continue on with this by going to the NBA Finals the next day wearing the mask at courtside, eventually taking it off about two months later on August 28th at the 2023 Streamy Awards. It comes to no one's surprise this was all just a stunt to promote his upcoming EP to whoever wants to listen, releasing on September 1st, which all I'm gonna say is that it's certainly an EP alright. It didn't really make any waves at all, and so he would get back to his normal Minecraft routine, even live streaming a bit again. However, it was during one of these streams where a user would ask if he would ever talk about the Amanda situation given it's been over a year already, and this would kickstart a whole big mess that I'm certain even he didn't expect to happen. 
Jim would ramble for a bit before proclaiming that he didn't do anything at all with Amanda, before straight up saying that she's a liar. She's a liar. She's a liar. She lied and manipulated the situation. I don't know for what gain. I don't know for what situation um, and, and exactly why. I have spe I have re I have like ideas of why. I have speculation of why. He would go on to say that he told all his friends at the time to not say a word about it online due to the sensitive nature of the situation. Now he and his lawyer were waiting months for Amanda to send a lawsuit his way, but that she never followed through with it. For the first like six, seven, eight months, uh, I was like, okay, uh, you know, maybe even, even maybe even just like the first few. I was like, okay, she said she's going to the police. She said that this is happening. Um, this is happening. So my lawyer said, wait. And then when she tries to, uh, you know, sue you, um, or when she tries to like, you know, take legal action, you take legal action back. Nothing happened. So uh, she didn't do that. He would say that he was planning on making a proper video about the situation and downloaded all the Snapchat data involved. Saying that it shows she doctored screenshots but doesn't provide the evidence to the viewers. Ramble on about what was talked about in the messages and the reason he added her on Snapchat was because he wanted to share a song snippet he was working on. And then says that he thought she was 18 but never texted her any of those kinds of things that she claimed. I thought she was 18, which doesn't matter because nothing sexual happened at all and nothing ever happened. But she had like her, did you um, sex, you know, did you sex her? No, I never, like, obviously... I think it's kind of ridiculous to think that, and this is, this is... Dream would say that she would delete messages to make him look bad, says that the timeline she's talking about doesn't add up at all, and rambles on for a bit again saying that he never took any legal action and never said nothing weird to her. He would go on to keep repeating himself over and over again in different ways, such as this instance right here when he talked about why he added her on Snapchat. Uh, people say, why would you add a minor on Snapchat? First of all, uh, I, I, first of all, I didn't know she was a minor because she had a, something about her graduating high school in her bio on Instagram. And on top of that, um, it doesn't matter that she was a minor. Like Snapchat's a messaging platform. It doesn't matter. Like obviously, I wouldn't go around if I if I knew if I had known a uh, hundred percent that um, uh, you know someone's like you know twelve or ten or something or fifteen. Like obviously, obviously, I would never even like talk to them because it's just like it can be uh, you know used as as weirdly. The rest of the video is just rambling and repeating himself over and over again. But the message was pretty clear by this point. He says Amanda never followed through with the lawsuit and he never said anything weird to her at all during their interactions. However, people on Twitter would start to maliciously clip the video out of context to slander his name, and as the clips made their way around the site, Dream would start to spill his spaghetti and lose his cool on it, admitting that he's misused his platform and blew up too soon for his own good, but that people are taking a serious situation and trying to turn it into some internet drama, eventually getting into a small fight with a random Twitter user after they started to fish for likes. He would eventually start to vent out about how people are misconstruing his live stream into him just admitting to everything and that this is serious and frustrating to witness in real time. How Amanda said publicly she'd be pressing charges and hasn't done so yet. And vent about how people always villainize him for no reason even when he tries to do something normal on the site. He would then talk about a TikTok video he made where he pulled out a Minecraft shirt that says exactly what it looks like poking fun at himself. But that he deleted it almost instantly and people now using it against him and that he hasn't done any of the bad things people are claiming he did. Where things get interesting is that during all this mess, Dream's parody account would start to shitpost, in which former Minecraft YouTuber and the amazing world of Gumball voice actor of the main character himself, Nicholas Cantu, would reply below, and the parody account would poke fun at Dream himself in a reply to him. Cantu would reply thinking it was the real Dream in expected fashion, and so Dream himself would respond saying that he assaulted him and called both him and an Uber driver a bunch of names and berated them, apologizing later on saying that he was drunk and high and continuing on as things started to really heat up online. Cantu would reply with the clip of the old guy who owned the dream name saying the n-word and telling him to DM him and call him names. Then go on to brag about hitting him and that he apparently tipped the Uber driver a lot afterwards because of what happened in the car that night. Double down on the allegations against Dream and say that he's lying about the racial stuff and claimed he got rejected by a lot of girls when hitting them up. Dream would go on to lead the DMs from Cantu when he apologized to him after the Uber car event. Which is basically what Cantu said on Twitter but a lot more long-winded and rambly in nature. Probably because he was hungover from the night before. Dream would end up blocking Cantu and he would brag about it on Twitter, post some more stuff about winning and whatnot, and Dream would threaten to sue the parody account where this mess started from. Things would get even crazier as Dream would expose a video of Cantu ego tripping on the Uber driver after meeting him at a party and insulting the both of them in the car on his main Twitter account. I have ADHD as well. Right, but because you said that's what the mask is, I think you're a alright? It's worth pointing out that Cantu was 20 and drunk at the time, meaning there was underage drinking going on, and people were trying to say that Dream was the one who got him drunk. However, there's no proof that it was Dream who was giving him the alcohol and it's reckless to assume it was him, but he did keep this video and use it as blackmail, so both people don't exactly look good in this situation. We'll never know who was the one supplying him with alcohol, and assuming it was just Dream and pinning the blame on him is a very bad faith way of going about the situation. 
However, part of the leak was Dream supposedly messaging the Uber driver and tipping him as he alleges that Cantu never actually did so, in which the messages show up as green on Dream's side. In the video, you can see that the Uber driver has what looks to be an iPhone in his hand, meaning that the messages should show up blue instead of green as Dream has an iPhone judging by the UI, but one can argue the Uber driver might have just gotten a new phone since the incident. Either way, things are still fishy on Dream's end and both people don't exactly look good in this situation, but given how this video has gone thus far, things are about to go from worse to even more insane in due time. Soon after the Cantu situation, a Twitter account called Burner22 will pop into the mix and start making claims that Dream was talking some type of way to a 16 or 17 year old when he was 20 on Snapchat. The leaked messages show a Discord user named Chia Seed and an unknown person talking amongst each other about how the blanked out user was told by their friend Jamie that he talked some type of way with her, which includes a look at his supposed Snapchat account and him complimenting her body, all while saying they were 17 at the time. Burner22 will continue to try and run this story by replying to a bunch of dream messages on Twitter, and they will drop more screenshots of the Chia Seed DMs basically showing a little more leading up to the Jamie image. Burner22 will claim that they sent a report to the authorities and showed them doing exactly that, and things had went off as it seemed it was going to head to the police from that point onwards. Now I was already aware of this account before they even sent the evidence to the police, and while it was interesting, I was still a bit skeptical as the evidence of it being Dream was a blurry image of his bitmoji and the name being Dream Dream without an image of his Snapchat username itself. However, I looked around and found screenshots from 2019 that match exactly what we've seen, meaning that there might have been a bit more going on here. For any people wondering, his public Snapchat was even made in 2019 as seen on the Wayback Machine, and an even more interest into what's going on. However, it is possible that someone could have made an exact copy of his account, and so while certainly interesting, it was still up in the air, and so I decided to move on and look for anything else while making this video. In an unexpected move, Burner22 will end up finding the video clips from the Snapchat messages, that which include Dream complimenting the girl multiple times, and even some audio clips that I can't play on YouTube, but I'm sure you get an idea on what's going on in them. Given what's going on, you can't really tell if it's Dream's voice, but actions were indeed going down on that side of the phone. So with this bombshell being dropped, Twitter started to blow up with the news. Dream would make a reply about this on his private Twitter account, first saying he's never done anything with someone underage and that he'll be talking about it in the video he's making. He would then make reference to the Burner 22 allegations, and instead of denying them entirely, he would seemingly confirm them to be true by saying it was being spread from a person who hates him and was trying to lie about him to all other YouTubers to ruin his image, stating that they were in a relationship with his ex Sam as well down further below. He would then post a Snapchat account of the person of interest, that being someone named Nat, and again say he will address everything in his upcoming video. Now Dream has a point about the ages, as nobody knows the identity of the girl in question, and they were only said to be 16 or 17 and the people are just supposed to believe the word of Burner22. Even though Burner22 did pull through the Snapchat audio, unless there was evidence that they were underage it could just be a story of nothing. For all we know the person Dream was talking to could have been 20 just like him, and until there was proof of age, it was just the story of Dream talking some type of way with somebody. Where things get interesting is that people found a Twitter account named CatCheese25 that had a Discord image where they and Dream were talking to each other at one point in time. If you open the image fully, you can see that Dream was talking to someone named Chia Seed, which is the same exact person seen in the original Discord message leaks. It was pretty obvious that CatCheese here was a lot more involved with the situation, and so they would start up a Twitter space to talk about what was going on as people started to question them. Within the first couple minutes, Cat Cheese will claim that she's the gnat in question that Dream had been talking about, claim that she's not behind the Burner 22 account, and also confirm that she's Chia Seed just like people saw earlier. I am Chia Seed. She will claim that Burner 22 got the screenshots after she sent them to two people a couple years back, states that she refuses to name the blanked out person from the Discord leaks but says it's not Dream's ex Sam, and says that Burner 22 is ran by two people that she doesn't know the identity of. She would say she got swatted and say it was from crazy dream stands, say that one of the Burner 22 people is allegedly another minor that Dream talked to at the end of 2019, states that she wants him to try and sue her because she hasn't said anything false, and says one of the people running Burner 22 is a girl. Access to the Burner 22 account, one of the two people, is another minor that Dream was talking to at the end of 2019, and they sent me proof of it. I opened the floor to Dream to sue me one of the people on the burner account is a girl. I don't know about the other person. Nat will go on and reiterate the stuff we just learned about for a good minute, state she never got any of the Snapchat material sent to her, and then post two screen recordings she took of their Snapchats recently together to further prove it's her to the people tuning into the call. She will then say that Dream messaged her on Twitter and doesn't state what he said to her for one reason or another. Ooh, Dream is messaging me. She will go on a ramble a bit, and the rest of the livestream would be more reiteration and unimportant info 
when that implying that she'll be suing him for dragging her name into the mess. I know he's got lawyers, but... Now, I was still a bit confused when putting things together, so I DM'd Nat asking about how the Snapchat videos are found, in which she replied that she never had access to the videos and she's not sure how Burner22 found them, which falls in line with what her claims were in the Twitter space. There's also confusion going on as she claims she had no affiliation with Dream's ex Sam, but the Snapchat messages have her name mentioned as her girlfriend, and she would tell me that it was a whole different person who happened to have the same name as Dream's ex and it was just a really unfortunate coincidence. I would ask if she thinks he knows this and was lying on purpose or was just ignorant, and she would say she believes he's lying and explains how she was never friends with Dream's ex Sam at any point in time and tells me the story as to why. With my questions answered, I moved back onto Burner 22 where they clarify that they are indeed two people running it, that Nat's involvement was just the Discord screenshots and she has nothing to do with the video clips they found, notably saying that they contacted her through Instagram after the initial post gained traction asking her if she had them and she said no, with their interactions ending from that point onwards, also saying some stuff about Dreams X alongside that. It also showed that their account was brand new as people have been trying to say that they've spread false info on Dream in the past, and ends things off showing their frustration with Dream for dragging Nat into the mess. Dream would go on to make a tweet about the ongoing situation, first talking about the Cantu stuff and how people keep making fun of him, saying that they shouldn't make such serious claims about someone as it can really affect him and other people. He then goes on to imply that the audio might be his as he refers to it as revenge and that's been difficult for him to keep a level head, saying that he's adding this to the video he's working on. He reiterates that he didn't do anything and again says he'll clear it up in the video and that this is a serious situation as the post ends. Now it's worth pointing out that their interactions might have gone down before he was even 20 as the Twitter DMs are dated August 31st, 2019, and Dream was born just two weeks prior on the 12th. But even so, this was the third time Dream has been caught up in a mess involving age gaps, and things were not looking good for him at this point. By this point, Dream wasn't posting at all on Twitter, meaning he was finally taking the situation seriously. That's when I started to piece things together and look in between the lines for anything that I might have missed, and that's where things start to get interesting. Nat has said that the blurred out user on Discord wasn't Dream's ex Sam but won't say who it was, yet the username itself seems to be a bit on the short side given how it looks. However, if you look close enough you can catch the bottom of the username, and in doing so you can clearly make out the last letter looking to be like an M, and given how short the name is, there's only a very small amount of names that can fit that bill. I would get back on Twitter to message her and see what's going on here, and in doing so I would notice her making a message about wanting to log off because it's all taking a toll on her. When checking her Twitter, I'd find her making tweet after tweet talking about the situation, including cracking jokes about being the person behind Burner22 with a friend of hers, and even making a fake image that seems like she was the owner of the account were it not for the follow by part giving it away. She would go on to show some of the Instagram DMs of one of the owners of Burner22, in which they basically just ask for evidence and she asks them for proof they run the account so she doesn't get tricked. That Instagram account is also gone now, so whoever's behind this is covering their tracks pretty quickly, and it's worth pointing out that in the screenshots Nat showed off, it seemed to be coming from a Snapchat account named Cat. Nat also started to pin a bunch of weird things on Dream, such as saying he enjoyed a picture of her cosplaying as Technoblade before, yet provides no proof of this claim. However, the situation would grow bigger as people show Dream hanging out at a bar with them and them saying he was in town for the day and wanted to hang out with a friend. One of the people who claimed to go say they just wanted to mess around and make fun of him which is why they ended up going, and then someone would start to spin it and say they'd been in contact with the girl since she was 16 and imply the obvious behind him showing up. The user would say in DMs that she doesn't believe they kept in contact until she was 18, but then says he never asked her age to poison the well some more. Someone who claims to have been one of the people who went would tell somebody else that it seemed like he didn't expect to be around more people other than his friend, and that they only went in order to make fun of him and nothing more like we've seen already, saying he looked uncomfortable pretty much the whole time as they tried to get his attention. He would eventually leave after a while due to this, and this person would say that the conversations weren't anything bad but they were making jabs at him while trying to pretend to be nice and think he caught on to it and left because of that. They would confirm that the meeting took place on November 22nd and mention that they didn't know the guy they were knocking down was Dream himself, in which they show a DM from that very day from a friend of theirs inviting them to a bar in order to knock a guy down off his high horse. Now back with that Discord DM stuff, I would ask Nat about it and she would say that she doesn't talk to him anymore and doesn't feel comfortable saying who it is, but again says that it's not Dream's ex. I would ask if she could clarify why she didn't feel comfortable giving their name out given how important they are to the story, and she would say they probably don't want to be dragged into the mess like the way she was. That's understandable given how volatile the situation has gotten, and so I'd move on and try to piece together any other leads I had. Nat used to be known as Nat Ritze at one point in time, and there's a couple screenshots from back in 2019 where Twitter users Larry and Calvin claimed that Nat was a manipulative freak, and so I would try to contact them for clarification. However, I couldn't contact Calvin as the DMs are closed, I never got anything from Larry as he never responded to me, so those leads were dead ends for the time being. 
I showed Nat the evidence I found and she said it was just a bad falling out between her friends and she's cool with Calvin now. And that she was never planning anything but they were all just really mad at each other alongside mentions of an unknown YouTuber she alleges tried to get stuff from her. Given she's been relatively concise with her explanations whenever things fell off, I didn't have any reason to believe she was throwing me off any trail, and so I'd keep looking around for more info. She had a deleted post making fun of the bar story from earlier, and while I found it suspicious, the very moment when I was going to ask her about it, she would make a post on Twitter that said the complete opposite, and that Dream was just wanting to charge his car and people were twisting it. Now I was obviously wondering how she got that info to begin with, and she would say that the man himself was messaging her what actually happened that night. A few hours later, Dream would make a post on his Reddit page saying he was just around visiting family and stopped at a bar to chill for a bit while his car charged, saying that he didn't go in with anyone in mind and was just trying to relax on his own. He would chill out for a bit with the people at the bar and took off once his car was ready, saying that people are running with whatever narrative they can make up and that he's working on a full response video soon. So either the people at the bar are lying or Dream is lying, and there's no way to figure out until he tells his side of the story, so we'll just have to wait and see on that one for the time being. Things would only get worse from here on out as another Twitter account would come out and accuse Dream of talking to them when they were 17 in 2019, making this a supposed 3 year age gap as well. They would say that he's a really bad person and to definitely trust him, and would then drop 3 screenshots in one vid of Dream supposedly messaging her. They would say they have more and again really try to get people to trust him as it was concrete evidence, before going on to name the other 3 people Dream talked to plus Nat for some reason even though she wasn't involved in anything like that. As far as those screenshots go, the first is thirsting over the girl, second is images being sent, and the third is a better resolution image of the second. The video clip is them opening up the account 9 minutes after their last interactions to show that it was Dream, and that was as far as the evidence goes. Now it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that there were glaring issues going on here, as the first thing people noticed was that the skin color of the person in the image was black, and in case y'all haven't seen him yet, Dream is far from that. They would then find the fourth image she sent on Snapchat in question is on Pinterest, Notice that the save to snap and chat text wasn't a feature until 2021, and how the beginning of the so-called video evidence from back in 2019, you can clearly see the Snapchat AI bot, something that wasn't added until 2023. It was very obvious this person was faking evidence for attention, and they would try and continue with this narrative for a bit before eventually caving in as people realized they were full of it, proceeding to promote their Instagram page while justifying trying to slander a man by saying he isn't a good guy. However, it turns out that this is Dream's ex-girlfriend Sam, and it's pretty easy to see that whoever ran this operation was trying to stoke the flames as much as they could, and will most likely never know who actually tried to lie about Dream in this case. It's been a common theme that whenever something truthful comes out about Dream, a bunch of people start lying on his name for internet clout, and I truly wish the worst for those people as they're not only lying on a man and muddying the waters when it comes to serious allegations, they're making me waste my time thinking I have another story to tell only for it to be a bunch of nothing. We have three situations going on here and everything else has been allegations or straight up lies, and things are being thrown into the mess for what I can only assume is cloud chasing behavior from terminally online Twitter users. Nonetheless, with this out of the way, we're back to square one and waiting on Dream to drop his response video. Now normally, I'd wait for Dream to drop his response video, but given the fact it took him almost 6 months to admit he cheated in a Minecraft speedrun and a little over a year to even talk about the Amanda situation again, I have a feeling it's going to be a good while before it ever comes out. I don't want to sit back and wait for what could be weeks or even months where it can only be a little extra in this video, but I do hope it served its purpose in informing you about what's been going on with his career. There's still a lot of loose ends going on though, mainly with the Amanda and Jamie situations, and I have a feeling in the event that when Dream's video comes out and if it flops, there will still be some interesting things that happen afterwards simply due to how volatile everything has gotten. He needs to really, and I mean really, get everything down as much as and as concisely as he can if he wants to save his career or at least stop the bleeding, because for what it seems, we might be in the midst of the downfall of Dream in real time. I don't like to throw these words around a lot due to how watered down they've gotten in the past few years, but it's easy to see that his ego and insecurities are part of what got him into this situation. Dream knew he was using his fans to do his bidding and heavily gave into a parasocial relationship with him, and while it definitely worked in the short term, it's got him to the point where he can't even go out at a bar anymore without people supposedly lying on his name for internet clout. Part of me feels sorry for him, but the other part of me knows that his choices is what led him down this path in life, and as unfortunate as that is, that's reality. Until then, we just gotta wait and see for what his video entails, and more importantly, if he's able to clear his name once and for all. All I know is that whatever happens next will surely lead to something alright, and in the event he's able to prove his innocence, we might have ourselves some very interesting future conversations to look forward to.